Welcome back to Schmatz Outdoors. Uh, today we're going to uh, start a coyote handling series. Um, we're going to go all the way from today. Today we're going to be, uh, I'm going to show you how to remove burrs from fur. Um, it will basically be for every animal, but again, I, I have a coyote here. He's got oodles of burrs in there to show you guys uh, how I remove them to try and uh, keep the fur the best quality you can. Uh, we're going to show you how to actually skin a coyote, how I wash my fur. So typically like coyotes, badgers, fox occasionally, anything that's sold fur out. And then once in a while, occasional raccoon or something like that that's muddy. Uh, I wash them and I'm going to show you how I do that in a video. We're going to show you how to flush a coyote. We're going to show you how I board a coyote. Um, and then we're going to show you kind of the final prep work on a coyote, how to... Uh, Basically how I get them ready to sell, the final steps on what I do to them to get them ready to sell. Um, so like I said, there'll be a, a series of videos coming out, basically all on handling coyotes. Uh, fox would be the same type of situation. The skinning is a little bit different on a fox, but we're, like I said, we're gonna go step by step on how I handle a coyote. Um, Again, I got got a coyote here. He's got plenty of burrs in him. So that's what this video, this installment is going to be. This is going to be the first installment of probably like five or six installments. So make sure you stay tuned for all of them. So you're basically going to get a start to finish on how I process a coyote once I have him caught. Um, pretty basic tools for this one. Uh, for this video, like I said, it's going to be removing burrs. I got this coyote here. Um, I had him hanging up. I typically hang him by a back leg uh, until I'm ready to skin him. But you could see how rough he looks. And the reason why he looks rough is because he is full of burdock. So I'm in the upper Midwest. So typical burrs I get are burdock. And we'll see when I'm getting pulling these out of here if I can find a good representation of what a, a full burdock looks like. Um, we get cockle burrs which are kind of a uh, round and they got little like hooks all the way up the sides of them. They're more of a hard where like burdock will kind of fall apart. And then we get, uh, I don't know if it's like a pigeon grass or what kind of grass it is, but it's a grass and it will like mat the fur down absolutely terribly. So I'm hoping this guy doesn't have any of that in him because it is a nightmare to get out. But if I do happen to find some, actually like right here is a, a cockle burr. Um, that's what they typically look like when they're in the fur. These are burdock and he's just covered head to toe, his whole tail, or you know, nose to tail essentially. Um, let's see. Yeah, see, he's got a cockle burr there. Um, but yeah, and then these are all burdock in here. You know, so he looks like he's not really complete, but I think once a guy gets all the burrs out of him, he'll look pretty nice. So the tools of my trade are going to be my fingers. I have a little more of aggressive dog comb. Again, you can get this at any like pet supply store. Um, and then I have more of like an actual like grooming comb. Uh, when I'm removing the burrs before they're skinned, I don't typically use this comb all that much. <coughs> so I don't typically use this comb all that much, but once in a while I will use it. Um, you shouldn't need a knife or anything like that because again, it's you're trying to preserve the fur the best you can. So I said, I'm going to kind of show you how to do that. I'm not going to show you this entire coyote. I'm going to go through a few of them here. Kind of give you an idea of how to do it. It's the same process for any species, fox, badgers, raccoons, all that stuff. You remove birds the same way. One thing I have learned though, like on a coyote like this, I try to remove all the birds I can except for the tail before I skin them. It's a heck of a lot easier to remove them when you got like the body and the fur, the skin is tight. It's a lot easier to find them and to get them all removed before I skin them. So like, you know, this coyote, I actually caught him last night and I had him hanging overnight outside where it was cold. If I would have spent the time, I, I'll probably be here an hour just removing burrs on one coyote. And obviously this is like an extreme example Normally they'll have a few in my area. Every animal I catch has burrs in there. 
Uh, some guys get by, like if you're up in Canada, they have told me that they typically don't get birds in their coyotes. Everyone I catch has some. It's just, you know, a varying amount. Usually they're like on the front of the neck, on the back of the neck, down to about the front shoulders, and then a little bit on the back hips and the tail. Seems like it always has burrs in there. Um, fox typically don't have a lot in my area. Typically won't have a lot on the body, but their tails will have some. Raccoons are kind of hit and miss. You know, they'll have a few here or there, but the process I'm going to show you, you would use for any species on to remove burrs from them. Um, I don't want to just grab my comb and like grab like right here. There's a glob of them. I don't want to just grab that glob and try and like start yanking. You're literally going to leave a bald spot on your pelt. And that's what we're trying not to do here. So I'm going to show you how I remove these guys. Again, this probably ain't going to be the longest video in the world because I'm not going to make you sit through an hour of me just picking burrs out of this guy. We're going to get going and I'll probably show you a few minutes of them. You can actually, once you kind of get your process down, you can go pretty good quick. Uh, the other thing I have is I just have a five gallon pail with a garbage bag in there. You know, and obviously garbage in it. So when I'm picking burrs, we're going to be picking them and I'm going to be dropping them in this pail. So if you kind of wonder what I'm doing with them, that's what I'm doing. I'm literally just dropping them in the pail right below me here. So we're going to get you guys mounted on my chest here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And we'll try to work kind of as close as I can right in front of me here. And we'll uh, start picking burrs. Like I said, I typically, you could pick them in any order you want, but I typically start at the head, <clears throat> work all the way to the back, do basically as much as I can on the middle of the back on one side, get all the burrs picked, and then I will comb them on this side of the animal and then flip the animal over, do the same thing. Start at the head, work my way to the tail. That way I try to make sure I don't miss any. Um, and then like I said, once I'm done, you know, like I said, I'll basically, I just rub in my hand through the fur when I'm done. You can feel like, you know, like right there, you can feel that with your, uh, hand, there's something prickly there instead of the nice soft fur. Like he's got none on his front leg here. Um, you know, but he's got some just behind his leg, that type of stuff. So, all right, let's get going here. So again, I typically start at the head. We're going to work our way towards the butt. Again, I'm not going to make you sit through the whole thing. We'll kind of turn you on as, as things go. But this, this cockle bird right here is going to be a, a perfect example for me to show you how I do this. So you can grab the, what you don't want to do is you don't want to grab this thing and literally just pull. You see how it's pulling all this fur tight? You're literally going to rip all that hair out. So the way I remove these is I'm actually grabbing the fur under the burr. So the burr is right on the top. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna hold with this one, pinching the fur tight, and I'm actually gonna pull with this one. So you're almost just separating the fur. So again, I'm pinching and then I'm just gonna kind of pull. I'm pulling with this one. This one obviously it took a little less, less to pull. So I'm basically just working right underneath that burr and I'm just pulling softly sideways. And you essentially just work yourself out and you can see, so that's a cockle burr. All the little like hooks on there is what catches it in the actual pelt. But there is almost no hair at all on that burr. And that's what you're looking for. So right here is where that burr was at. But if I kind of straighten that fur out, all the fur is still there. The guard hairs and everything are all still there. So just rub in. There's the... Uh, I don't know what, this is a, a boot jack or something we call them. Um, just a little guy. So right up here by the neck, there's another one. So again, I'm just pinching and we're gonna kind of pull apart here. And I'm not pulling up on the fur, I'm pulling sideways to the body of him. So right here, I'm actually holding the burr. You, sometimes you gotta kind of work your way around until you get it loosened up okay again there's another cockle burr completely out of there has almost no hair left on him if like I said if you just grab that guy and start pulling up on it you're literally gonna rip big chunks of actual fur out okay like right there's a, a part of a burdock the rest of it is still in here so again we're just kind of pulling sideways 
until I get it mostly removed. Okay, and it, you would see how that one actually just kind of, you can literally pull enough of the hair that they literally just fall off. This one here still got a little bit holding it there. Okay, so there's the last of that uh, burdock. Okay, right here's another one. This is a small cockle burr. And there it is. So I said, once you get going, it really doesn't take a whole lot. We're going to kind of work on the top of his body so you guys can see in the light. So again, like right here, there's that's, I hope you guys can kind of see that guy. It's kind of what, like I said, like we call a boot jack. Um, see, like right here, that's what that boot jack is. You just kind of hang in there and it's got like two little like fingers stick out the bottom. To get it so you guys can see him, he's got like two little fingers stick out this side that hold him in there. Typically, like those, you can comb out. We're gonna move back to this patch of burdock here. So, again, it's got a huge clot of hair all wadded up in one little spot. So, what I typically do is I'll start on one end of it, okay. And you can kind of see what I did there. So part of this burdock is falling apart. So I just kind of picking a few of the pieces out of there. We're going to grab and just start pulling some of the hair to the side. And some of these you can literally remove that whole glob. So I'm holding the burrs with this hand and I'm pulling the hair sideways to, to the body. So I'm not pulling on the hair. I'm pulling it kind of sideways and it's just kind of pulling it out of that wad of burrs. Work my way back towards like the, and again, I'm trying to be kind of gentle about it because I don't want to like rip the hair all apart. We'll kind of, we're going to switch and pull a little off of the other side. Okay, so right there it actually split the clod of burrs into two pieces. What we're going to try and do here. All right, so here's a burdock. You know, pretty much complete looking burdock. I hope you guys can see that. Yeah. So one, if they tear apart, they're a real pain in the butt to get out. And if you get them wet, they also are really tough. They kind of fall apart when they get wet. So again, there's another one. So it's just the wad of burrs just kind of falling apart as I pull the burr, the hair away from the burr. So again, I'm just kind of holding the burr. And I'm just pulling some of the hair away from it. Again, it kind of broke apart again. So you can see like now I got basically that burr is just on a few hairs there. So again, I'm just slowly and I'm just slowly pulling a few hairs away from it. And then like I said, eventually it just kind of falls apart, falls off. Okay, so we'll go back to this big wad here again. And you don't really have to pull them all off as a big wad. You can literally start taking apart, you know, one burr at a time. It really doesn't matter. It's a little easier to leave them as one big glob than it is to break them into a whole bunch of little ones. But, okay, there's that one. So again, I'm basically holding the burrs and I'm pulling the hair off of the water burrs. So you can see like I have most of this clod all coming all as one big spot. There's a little bit on this side I think. I don't have loose. And the deeper they get down in there, kind of the tougher they are to get off. So these are all mostly on the surface. So I don't know if I have my, well, I broke like the quad apart. So again, like I, I don't know, there's probably six, seven burrs all in one wad there. So I don't know if I had my trap too close to where a burdock plant was at um, or what really happened, how he ended up with so many of them on him. Cause like I said, he's got probably 10 times more than they would normally have in my area, if not more than that. Okay, a 
few so once i got that big wad off there's still a few of these here where you know the they kind of fall apart got one wad right here left by that big clod if they get like down into the under fur like i said this one here is kind of down into the under fur and it takes a little bit more to get it off of there and even when I'm sort of pulling, it looks like I'm pulling on the burr. I'm actually holding the hair. So here we go. So that one took a little bit of like the under fur with it. And I don't get too carried away about making sure every one of the little fingers of the burdock get pulled out of there. So what I just did, the, your hands get stuck. You see how it sticks to me? So I just kind of roll it up and then you can get it off of your fingers. There's so one right here. Like I said, basically I'm finding them by using my fingers. Just you know, rubbing your hand on it, you can feel when there's a little bump or whatever. So again, like right here is a real nice one. So we're just slowly pulling to the side. And now I'm gonna switch to just holding the burr and pull all the hair off. And like I said, you look at that whole thing, I had one hair come out with that burdock. All right, we're going to keep going here. Like I said, I got, so basically I have this much by like this much of it done all the way, you know, I don't know how long that took me, but long enough, honestly, and it's going to take me a while. We're going to keep going. Like I said, if I find anything else interesting on here, we'll turn you guys back on. But like I said, we're going to just keep working my way through. So this burdock here kind of fell apart. So I'm just picking out some of the little fingers of it. And some of that will come out if you, once we get him pretty well picked all the way down, I'll start combing him lightly with that, uh, with this comb here. And it will pull a lot of those little fingers and stuff out of there. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I think that's about it for right now. Like I said, once we get some more of these actually picked out of there, we'll turn you guys back on and show you where we're at. All right guys, so I've went head to butt on this guy and I uh, have all the burrs picked out of basically the top half and as far down and around as I can get as close to the table. Um, and I did part of his tail because when I skin him, I want to at least have the burrs out so I can split the tail. So I mean, there's still a big wad right there, but I'm not really too concerned about that. So basically all I need to do, so I have just the top done. I haven't done the bottom of him yet. Um, but I did the belly and I did his neck, you know, as far as I can reach around. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take my comb and we're going to start up here by the head. No, oh, see right there, I missed one. So my comb will kind of quick on or, you know, catch in the burrs. So we're going to just slowly, like I said, start combing. You know, and he looks so rough. You can see how rough and he looks. But as soon as you start combing him, all the fur is there. He's just, you know, roughed up from be having all the burrs tangled up in his fur. So again, we're gonna kind of keep going all the way down. And he had a little bit of dirt on his legs, which uh, we'll get, we're gonna wash him. So that will take care of all that. So like I said, he looked, looked like he was missing a bunch of fur, but once you get him combed out, he actually looks nice and even. You can kind of see how much I get, but a lot of that is actually like part of burdocks and stuff stuck in there. So this side here is all done, ready to go. Like I said, we, uh, you know, and I'm just rubbing my hand on there. And if I feel like right here is just a little piece of burr, uh, you know, any burrs or anything, you know, you can feel them by running your hands back and forth in the fur. So yeah, like I said, even though he had all the burrs, he's still actually going to be end up being a really nice coyote when I get him all done. So we're going to, and I probably had maybe 20 minutes total, but like I said, I spent a while picking burrs out of his tail to make sure I could split that when I skin in him. So we're going to flip him over here and we'll do the other side of him, get all the burrs off, and then we'll uh, turn you guys back on. 
Again, if I see any of like that grass stuff in him, I'll show you. I didn't find any. It was all basically burdocks and a few cockleburs in there. So, all right. Like I said, we'll uh, keep working on him. We'll turn you guys back off. I got anything else to show you. All right, guys. So I think I have all the birds picked out of this guy finally. Uh, I mean, you can see we ended up with a lot of them. I mean, and there's plenty of hair mixed in there too. Like I said, more, a lot of that's out of the tail, honestly, because I'm not, I don't get too as concerned about the tail. They don't really use that for uh, garments or anything, but I picked, made sure I picked like three inches down his tail because when I'm skinning him, I want to make sure that much gets open. The rest of this doesn't get fleshed. So I'll actually weave all the birds in the tail until I'm actually, uh, doing the final combing and everything else basically getting them prepared to sell but yeah the rest of him i got like i said he looks a little rough there's one little bird right here i just found like i said i'm just rubbing my hand on and back and forth and you can kind of feel if there's any birds so we'll just take my comb here and we're going to give him a good healthy comb you know and as rough as he looks even when you get all the birds picked out of him you know, he combs out real nice here. You know, he looks like he's nice and complete. He ain't bald anywhere or anything like that. You always end up with a little bit of hair on there. Uh, I try to comb them as little as I can. Um, obviously, this guy had a lot of burrs, but a typical coyote, I almost don't comb them at all until right at the end because I don't want to pull out any more hair than I need to. So, uh, yeah. So I think that's everything on removing burrs. Um, the next video in this series is going to be skinning a coyote. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be the second of a, probably a five or six video series here on how to handle coyotes. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.